I'd like to talk to you about an idea whose time has come. And that idea is culture hacking. And there's probably going to be uh, some number, maybe even many of these little videos that will cover the whole corpus of, of culture hacking that, that comes to mind when the topic arises. And first things are kind of first. Like, so let's start with some definitions that will uh, illuminate our path as we discuss uh, the various aspects of, of culture hacking. First of all, culture hacking is really just a special case of culture design and or culture engineering. Uh, just in the same way that software hacking is really a special case of software design and software engineering. That software engineering provides the whole uh, basis, the whole fundament uh, upon which software hacking takes place. And I'm using the word software hacking or culture hacking uh, to represent the superlative case of culture engineering. Now, culture design, culture engineering, culture hacking, they all involve writing or changing something we'll call the culture code. Now, what is a culture code? Well, first of all, what's a culture? What's a culture in the context of, of culture hacking? Well, when I say a culture, uh, and then uh, what am I referring to in this context? I'm referring to the set of shared attitudes, values, goals, and practices that characterizes a group. So any group that has kind of common attitudes, values, goals, and a set of routine practices uh, that can be said to characterize them, they, that group has a culture. And if those things can be sort of teased out, then we can use them that information to create a culture code. Now, the culture code sort of exists in theory, but we want to tease it out and turn it into something you can write, into actual code, textual code, that everybody can understand. And culture code, then, is the set of written instructions, definitions, and other elements that specify a culture code, or a culture. So a culture code is what we can basically write that would define a culture, that would make it possible for the individual to adopt it, make it possible for the group to adopt it. You see, once we get a, a culture code, something visible, something workable, something actionable, then uh, we can tweak, create, improve, build on, uh, remove the bad parts, whatever we want. It then becomes an intentional design effort and all the, all the goodness of design uh, uh, possibilities emerge, emerges for, and becomes a part of our repertoire of cultural life. And the culture, you know, it's the culture tends to create the people as much as the people create the culture. It's very, very difficult, even, even hugely unlikely that we will ever be able to um, change each individual in, in a given culture uh, to optimize their behavior and to uh, minimize their neurotic uh, antics. But if we change the culture, the culture can help change the people. And that's, that's why this is such a tremendously uh, optimistic moment that we're living in. And it's exciting. And not, let, me, let me tell you why I think it's an idea whose time has come. And that's because uh, of the tremendous culture, in, the engineered cultures that have been adopted into our contemporary cultures, uh, corporate culture scene. By engineered cultures, I mean things that have been created on purpose that though they are kind of monolithic, can be adopted and by a group or a company and will change people's behavior and will have an impact generally favorable on the output of the people. Things like uh, stuff that's coming from the technical world, like Agile and Scrum and uh, extreme programming. Uh, things that's coming from uh, traditional quality effort, uh, 
like uh, Quality Circle, Six Sigma, things like that. Things that are coming from Toyota, like Lean, Kaizen, and Kanban, and other uh, cultural innovations. Now, the, the deal is, though, and the reason there's a, a certain rightness of time for culture hacking, per se, uh, versus culture engineering, is that uh, we're about to see the emergence of of, of uh, a personal culture platform, something that everybody can jump on, add to, subtract from, make better, improve, leverage one another's efforts. Right now, the cultures that are available, the engineered cultures are, are kind of an all or nothing deal. And uh, they're really sort of unwieldy to adopt. And you generally have a whole cadre of experts that come with them. Uh, you know, much like it almost exactly like the era of mainframes and mini computers and like dedicated computing machines like like a wang word processor something that did one function did it well and i mean all these things have contributed and and performed nobly insofar as it's possible for them to but when we compare it to the personal computer revolution that followed and then the web revolution that followed it, and then the phone revolution that followed it, and so on. Uh, the, the history of culture engineering is at that moment, uh, uh, circa 1976, when the personal computer emerged. And with the personal computer, a couple of standardized, more or less standardized platforms that everybody could program to. So that word processing weren't, became, not, didn't become machines, they became programs. And they could compete with other programs and, and spreadsheets and et cetera. The whole, the whole richness of software followed. And I believe a similar sort of moment is at hand for culture hacking and that the personal explosion is about upon us. And we'll be talking about this in, in much more detail and specifying what sort of things we, we might find and expect from uh, a platform, might find it and expect from a platform, and what sort of applications we might look for or create. And lots of other kind of fun and exciting and hopeful, most of all hopeful topics. See you then.